Hey everybody, Paul with Sickle Nirvana here, and I wanted to do a video about fishless cycling and my experiences with it, and decided that maybe I should throw together a video on the nitrogen cycle first before I go into fishless cycling. So uh, this video is going to be about the nitrogen cycle, and uh, I'm going to kind of go into a little bit of detail on on, on the process and what can happen to your fish if, if your tank isn't cycled. So uh, let's get started. Well first an overview of the nitrogen cycle in your aquarium uh, is you know your fish produce ammonia. That ammonia is is consumed and converted to nitrite by bacteria and then another type of bacteria consumes and converts that nitrite into nitrate and then you do a water change to remove the nitrate from your aquarium. In general, um, without going to into a lot of detail, that's what the nitrogen cycle is. So I think that what I want to do is start with that first step and go into a little bit of detail. So ammonia. When you've put fish in an aquarium, they, of course, um, create a lot of waste and actually the process of them uh, absorbing oxygen through their gills actually produces some ammonia and ammonia is extremely toxic to fish it's NH3 it's non-ionized and that's what makes it super toxic there's another form in, called ammonium and the ammonia can kind of goes between those two forms, ammonia and ammonium. Ammonium is NH4, and it's ionized, and so it's much less less toxic to fish. So um, there's actually an, an interesting correlation between ammonia and ammonium and pH in your aquarium. A pH in your aquarium below seven is very acidic, and with an with acidic water in your aquarium you're going to have much more ammonium. If your pH is above 7 in your aquarium, it's going to be more alkaline. So if it's below 7, it's more acidic. If it's above 7, it's more alkaline or basic. Below 7, you're going to have much more ammonium. If it's above 7, you're going to have much more ammonia, which is very toxic to fish. So keeping fish like uh, uh, an African cichlid that requires a high pH you're going to have much more ammonia in your aquarium, which is much more toxic to the fish. So what, what happens to fish when they're exposed to high levels of ammonia? Uh, it causes them to, ammonia actually will cause them to hemorrhage both internally and externally uh, and eventually kill them. What you can do is if you're looking in your aquarium and you suspect that you have ammonia poisoning, you'll see maybe fish gasping for air red streaks on their fins or gills. Their gills may be, or, or their fins or body, um, they might have red or purple gills. They might be listless, not moving around, real lethargic, not wanting to move around. Uh, so those are some signs that your fish have ammonia poisoning. Well, what can you do if you have high levels of ammonia in your aquarium? You can do a big water change. That can reduce ammonia in your aquarium. Ammonia is measured in parts per million, and uh, if you do, say, for instance, a 50% water change, you're reducing your ammonia by 50%. There's also things like Seachem's Prime that can be used to, um, it's used to dechlorinate your water before you put it in your aquarium. That also, in higher doses, can detoxify nitrite, or ammonia, and then later nitrate, which we'll talk about. So, that that's another way to reduce it. Um, you could reduce feeding, reduce the amount that you're feeding and stuff to your fish because if you're feeding less, they're going to produce less waste. So that's uh, how, that's ammonia. That's the first part of the cycle. Well, what happens with ammonia? Um, I talked earlier when I did an overview that, you know, there's bacteria that can convert it. Well, that bacteria is called nitrosomonas. And nitrosomonas develops in your aquarium and then consumes that ammonia and converts it to nitrite. 
So that's how you get rid of the ammonia in your aquarium. Nitrosomonas is, it's important to remember, is an aerobic bacteria, meaning it requires oxygen to work. So now's a good point to mention aquarium filtration. You hear when you're out purchasing your aquarium the importance of having the right size filter. You want flow, they'll talk about it, a filter will cycle the water so many times an hour and a filter will move so many gallons per hour so it's compatible with this, with this or that aquarium. Well, a big part of a, there's three different forms of filtration in a filter. One's mechanical. That's the first one. It filters out particles and uh, large objects and things like that. The second part's biological, and the third part's chemical. Chemicals like your carbon and stuff, but that biological part arguably is the most important part of your filter because it's where that bacteria grows. So um, you need to have that the filter in place and have the right right you know, kind of media in there for bacteria to grow on it. So um, once that happens and the, the nitrosomonas converts that bacteria, then we go on to kind of the second stage of this cycle, and that's nitrites. So nitrites. Nitrites are, it's NO2, and it's also very toxic to fish. So now you're saying, well, the ammonia was super toxic, the bacteria converted into something else that's very toxic. Well, yes, nitrites are toxic, but um, they can be changed to something else in, in the cycle. So what, with this nitrite, what, what does it do? Why is it toxic, to, or what, why is it so toxic to fish? What does it do? Well, it can give fish something called brown blood disease. Essentially, it makes it so that the fish's blood vessels cannot absorb oxygen and will cause death through suffocation. So it will kill them. If they live in high levels of nitrite, it will kill them. So what are some signs that your fish have nitrite poisoning? Well, of course, first you test the water. You test the water, and if it's got high levels, um, then you know you need to address it. Um, you'll see the fish maybe at the surface gasping for air. You'll see the fish uh, hanging out at the outlets of your filters because the filter's probably putting a little bit of oxygen into that water, and so they're, they're gasping for air there. Their gills can have a brownish look to them. Um, they can be listless, not moving around. So those are some signs that your fish has nitrite poisoning. What can you do about it? Well, Again, with the water change, if you do a large water change, it will reduce the parts per million of nitrite in your aquarium. That's the first thing that you can do. Uh, the other part, since this uh, restricts their absorption of oxygen, you can try to get them to absorb more oxygen by adding salt to your aquarium. Now, of course, follow, look it up, follow instructions on how much to add and stuff. You don't want to over salt a freshwater aquarium or kill your fish with that. Um, you can Oxygenate the water, water more with more aeration at a water uh, air pump in a stone water, um, and so that that adding more oxygen to the aquarium, oxygen into the aquarium can help them um, with this through this, um, and then you can reduce feeding just like with ammonia. Uh, reducing feeding causes them to create less waste, causing them to create less ammonia and then in turn less nitrite. So that can help if you have high levels of nitrite. So what happens to the nitrite? You know, I mentioned before bacteria will convert it. Well, that is called, the bacteria is called nitrobacter. And that nitrobacter will consume the nitrite and convert it to something called nitrates, which are much, much less toxic to fish. So unlike the ammonia and the nitrite, the, the fish can live in water that's got some nitrates in it. Once it gets, the nitrates get to a certain point, it can be harmful, and I'll talk about that, but um, it's much less harmful. So up to this point, you have fish, they produce waste, the waste, and, and it creates a bunch of ammonia in the aquarium. Your nitrosomonas, it, it changes that, it converts that over to um, nitrite, and then uh, the, the nitrite is... Is, uh, is converted over by nitrobacter, and now you have nitrates. What's the deal with nitrates? So nitrates are much, much less 
toxic to fish. They're NO3, uh, and the question is, what do they do? They're less toxic, but are they still toxic? And the answer is, in, in, in two ways, they can be toxic. The first way is called nit nitrate shock. What that is, is if your fish goes from water that is one has one parts per million of, of nitrate and an extreme change in nitrates can cause them to experience nitrate shock. The other is nitrate poisoning and that's when they're exposed to high levels of nitrate over a long period of time and what you have to remember when you're keeping fish is all fish are different. So some fish tolerate much higher levels of nitrate than others. So you have to research your fish uh, before you just jump into this hobby. So, um, let's see, signs that your fish have nitrate poisoning are very similar to the signs that your fish have nitrite poisoning. You can do tests to, uh, to determine what your levels are. Uh, the one that I use is API's Master Freshwater Kit to test my aquariums. Uh, and it gives me, you know, the parts per million of these of the ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. So, the the final stages of, of nitrate poisoning can present themselves as the fish kind of curling, uh, and curling up and having its head by its tail. That can be a sign that you have nitrate poisoning. Treatment is tough. If you see a fish to that stage, it's really far along. Not a whole lot that you can do. You, the prevention is the key here. Don't, like if you get a fish from a fish store, ask what their nitrate levels are. If they have a hundred nitrate parts per million and you have zero in your aquarium at home, you know, you want to make sure you acclimate those fish very slowly to that water. Otherwise you could create nitrate shock. You could give them nitrate shock. Um, so, now nitrates. This is where most, you know, what do you do with nitrates? How do you get rid of nitrates? I talked about ammonia and nitrite. Well, with nitrates, uh, most videos stop, most explanations of this stop at, you just do a big water change. You do a water change, you get rid of those nitrates, you reduce the parts per million of nitrates, and you can be done. Yeah, done with it. But there are some things that can be done to reduce nitrate levels in your aquarium to further um, go through this nitrogen cycle. Now, if you want to talk about the same things we've been talking about, we, we mentioned that Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter are aerobic bacteria. They require oxygenated water. They require oxygen to, to make these conversions. Well, there's a bacteria uh, that can actually consume nitrates, and it produces nitrogen gas, which then escapes up, you know, out of the aquarium. So... But that bacteria is anaerobic, meaning it, it, you, it doesn't want oxygen in its environment. So there's certain types of filter media that claim to be able to um, be porous, yet not let water flow fast enough through to get oxygen to the middle of that filter media, and that they claim anaerobic bacteria can build there. In saltwater aquariums, you'll hear uh, deep sand beds where the water's down there deep and it's not getting any oxygen to the bottom of the sand bed and then anaerobic bacteria can live there. Another way to remove it from a tank and more common way in a freshwater aquarium is plants because plants will consume that nitrate as uh, fertilizer. The, um, the whole um, aquaculture scene, or I'm sorry, <laughs> not aquaculture, aquaponic scene um, uses that. It, it actually adds plants, growing plants, growing gardens um, to this whole process because the plants can consume that nitrate. So you could have plants in your aquarium that that do that. Some people will build um, you know, algae scrubbers where they're pumping water across a screen that grows algae on it so that can remove it. Uh, refugiums in a saltwater tank. I mean there's different ways to remove those nitrates um, and complete that cycle to get those out of their aquarium. Most common way is once you're about every week you do a water change and um, the water change also helps add trace elements and things back into the aquarium water. So that completes the whole cycle. Uh, 
in an ideal situation, you would test your water and you'd have enough bacteria in your filter to consume your uh, all your ammonia and your ammonia readings will be zero parts per million. All your nitrate and your nitrates will be zero parts per million. And then when you do a water change, it greatly reduces your nitrates, which slowly build back up. You do a water change again to greatly reduce them. Um, so that's the nitrogen cycle. And that's where I'll stop this video. I will say one thing, one tip um, as far as when you're cycling your aquarium and, and with this nitrogen cycle, this bacteria will grow in your substrate and other areas. It, it isn't necessarily just going to grow on your filter. And so you have to be careful doing water changes and things. You don't want to disturb your, your good bacteria. You want to encourage it to grow in your filter. So, but the next thing I'm going to talk about is what I've, I'll talk about the fishless, fishless cycling or all types of cycling in your aquarium, how you can get this cycle going so that your fish can, can live in your aquarium. And I'll talk about tips and things that I learned as I've gone through this and things to look out for and stuff. So that will be in the next part of this series. I will, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Um, subscribe, like, and, uh, Leave me a comment. I will see you guys later.